Do With Teresa. Thank you for joining me today. Well, today's video is my sheet load of cards video. Well, today we're going to do something a little bit different. We're actually going to take the design and I'm going to make the cards here today. I won't be using a sheet load. I'll be using crafts for my stash. So, let's get started and see what we can do to make it look like a farmhouse card. I have a friend that has a birthday. She has a farm, so it's perfect. I grabbed the, the Good Life paper packet, and I'm gonna take it and use one of the stickers from it. I've already got this sticker ready to go. This is one of the strips that comes on here, and I've got this sticker ready to go. I actually took a little trick actually took an embossing buddy and removed some of the sticky off of it because sometimes it's just a little too much and so if I've decided I'm gonna pop it up which I more than likely will because of this design and because I'm hand delivering it I'll pop that up with 3d tape so it makes more sense for me to take off that sticky so that's why that's gone I'm gonna show you here um, I've already made the cuts on this because this is a part of the Call Me Crafty Owl sheet load of cards. So all of the cutting instructions I'll show you here in this video, but I won't go through them. I'll put this together. There is going to be this strip that's going to go across there so we can just kind of meet that up. And the, the trick here is you want to put everything as close to the middle as possible. Get it really close and tight in the middle and then and then because your focal point and this strip will cover this it doesn't really matter how well that meets and and we'll do that and then I'm going to place it on top of this um, I grabbed my glue this is my glue I'm going to be using this glue bottle because I finally got through most of this glue and I put it in this small bottle so that I can take it with me and I also just like working with that on videos or I'll use my removable tape. The other trick I wanted to show you is if you haven't been watching me for very long, oh I do want to welcome some new subscribers. Thank you so much for joining me. But I have this trick that I have done in the past where you take press and seal and the press and seal is what you will use to line up the pieces of paper. But more, that's a pretty good thing, right? That's a pretty good alignment right there. So I will take this press and seal and I will lay it on top of it, okay? By doing this, it grabs it, keeps it in place, and what I'll do, again, if you haven't been watching me, you haven't seen this trick. If you've been watching me, you've seen this trick. I'll take those. Now, pick, peel them up. And I will take the glue and I'll put it all the way around. Then all I have to do is pull this down. I'm trying to do this in the video so that you can see it, but you know, I'm not doing very good, I'm sure. My craft table has arrived. It just went to the wrong location, so now I'll be able to put the craft table together and hopefully have better videos for you. So I'll take that and I'll put it together. We'll seal that. I'll pull that off and it'll be set up pretty well. I, met, I, I can move this around because I used the glue. So now I can take this off lightly. You don't want to do it too heavy yet. Take that off lightly. And then wiggle it around and get it to where you want it. So now that I have I have done that, we'll just this is set up, ready to go. We'll press it down. Okay. 
Okay, let that dry for a second. And I will show you the next couple of items. Okay. We're going to take this, set it all the way across, line it up straight, and then we'll just trim it off. Firm believer in using what you have. And rather than cut up new pieces, I am using what I have. See what I said where it doesn't really matter if that's lined up because you're just going to cover that up anyway, but I just got lucky and got mine lined up really well. Doesn't always happen, trust me. If you're a beginner, don't be intimidated because it happens all the time where you have to redo, realign. I just got lucky that time. So let's clip this off. Remember, we decided to do this, so I'll take that for my beginners. This is a really, really strong tape. I order them in the great big rolls, and you can see this roll is getting low, so it's time for another order. They're kind of pricey. I don't always do that, by the way, if you're new here. I don't always do that. Sometimes I will just take more circles and line them up and that's how I'll do it. So we'll take a little pokey tool. This is the one I just had handy. I have several because you never know. When I used to do crops we'd take them with us so I always had one here and at the house and one when I take to the crop with me. So here you go. Now I know for sure I'm not going to stick this down because I know for sure that I'm going to put the happy birthday directly underneath it so I'll probably put that down where I want it first. But that's what this is going to look like and it'll say happy birthday and this card will be finished. I decided to go ahead and put the toffee on. But I also decided I wanted to have it around the edge of that too. Now I've already taken off the strips on the back so I'm just going to very carefully go around the edge of that and then I'm also going to go around the edge of here. Then I'm going to go a little bit around the edges of here so the whole thing looks rustic. I mean it just makes me think of farmhouse. So we're going to do that real quick. If you don't have one of these brushes, they're very nice because they're very light. They make a light look. And I like that. And I usually start at the corners and I move to the inside. Okay, so that looks a little bit more grungy. So, by the way, I make these strips up of Happy Birthday. And I just have them in a binder. If you haven't seen that video, I'll try to find that video and link it for you. But I put them in a photo album. And so anytime I need my sentiments, I can just grab them from there and make this quick adjustment. If it's too white or it's too not quite the color I want, I just take some ink and put it over the top. If you don't have one of these mats, they're very nice if you're going to be doing this kind of blending. They're easy to wipe off. I generally have beside me some baby wipes. I don't have them in the room right now because I had my grandson and they're in the other room. So I've already cut this card. I have not scored it so I thought I would Go ahead and show you the measurements. This is quick and easy. If you're a card maker, you've been doing this for a while, but if I have some new people, I generally take, in this case, I had a 12 by 12, and this is Harbor, which is the color that's right here, although I know it doesn't look that much, but that's because I put that rust around it. And I cut the first cut at five and a half, 
in the second cut of that 12 by 12, which is it's eight and a half. So that will give me an A2 size card. And so we'll fold it, but in this case, since I have my, my score out, at four and a quarter, I will line this up. The white one is my scoring tool. And there you have it. And it makes it so much easier. You see how fast and easy that is to, to close that up and make your card. Now before I complete this card, I wanted to show you, I have sitting beside me in my little cart, one of these days I'll get a chance to show you my craft arm, but I have four by five and a quarter cut paper, and in this case I am using Nina Solar White 80 pound cardstock because there's no reason for me to use the 110, which is definitely a better cardstock for your focal points. But to put these in your inside so that there's a nice, great white place for people to write their sentiments. Um, if you're selling cards or you're planning to take them to vendor fairs, you're going to want to put something inside these, these cards that are darker. So. But I just wanted to let you know, one, another tip is I don't use the heavier cardstock here because of the fact that you don't need it. And I would rather use my 110 cardstock. But if you're taking this and you want people to um, have less postage with it, because the more bulk, the higher the postage, at least here in the United States. So I wanted to show you that, that I always use 110 for focal points and for these inside pieces I use the, I use this 80 pound. I'll put a white, white in here, put my base on top. and this card will be finished. So I'll put this together and you can take a look at the finished card and some of the other cards that I've made using this similar design. I want to thank you so much for joining me today. For my new subscribers, thank you for joining me. For my subscribers who've been with me for a while, thank you so much. I appreciate you. But if you haven't subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. And if you'll hit that like button, it helps you to, to notice me. Oh, and hit the notification button. That way you'll see the new videos when they come in. Until next time, have a great day.